in previous videos we were discussing these electrical circuits called voltage dividers that always have a configuration like this. In particular, you have two resistors sort of connected end-to-end -end like this or in so-called series. And if you apply input voltage across the whole series of resistors here, then this V out here will be a fraction of Vn. And the fraction depends on R1 and R2. So V out is generally less than Vn, and that's what voltage dividers do, is they divide up an input voltage into an outer one like that, which is less. So what we wanted to look at then is, well, how do those work, though? It's one thing to build these voltage dividers and come in and measure these voltages and stuff, but what is actually going on inside of them to make this happen somehow secret or what's going on? And it's actually a very nice lesson in Ohm's Law, which we've written down a couple of times, V equals IR, and let's just see how it all comes together. So if I sort of move this into the camera view here, I've actually built a voltage divider here, and we've used this a couple of times. Um, I've got a lot of cables in here. Maybe let me just take these out here so I can describe what we have before we get into looking at it. I'll just remove the meter for a minute here. What I have here is the battery, of course, and I have its power going into this side right here, sort of going in right over here. And I have a couple of extra wires in here running the voltage divider because I'm going to get in and make a current measurement in a minute, but hopefully you can see that current's going to flow into this red wire through the jumper wire here into resistor 1, and resistor 1 here is a 10K it's a brown, black, orange band. So my R1 is equal to 10K, to barely fit that on the screen there. Okay, And the R2 that I'm using here is a red, 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 so it's 2.2K. So those are the resistors that I'm using in the voltage divider. And they're just connected in the classical way we've seen before. End to end, the input of the 10K here goes down to this column of breadboard, which comes back into the 2.2K and back around. That's my circuit there. And of course, I know if I go in and measure the voltages across these resistors here, which I think I'll just go ahead and do now, the voltage divider is on and operating. Let's just see what we get. So there's the meter. And it looks like across the 10K resistor here, I have about 7.2 volts. So I'll sort of jot that on here so we can have these numbers down here. 7.2 volts. Remember, it's being driven by a 9-volt battery. And the voltage across the 2.2K resistor here is coming in at about 1.5 volts. So there we go. Now, those two add together to be about 8.7. Let's see what I'm getting across the whole resistor network. Yeah, about 8.7 volts. So it's nice and consistent. 9-volt battery isn't doing so hot, but it is what it is, and it uh, looks like we're doing okay. And that's the nature of the voltage divider. So as we mentioned here, we go back to the, the drawing right here. Although my VN is 8.7 volts, I'm getting 1.5 volts across V out. That's the voltage division. I'm all the way down to 1.5. And of course, the voltage across the other device, resistor here will be 7.2. They also have to add up to be the total. But normally, we focus on this lower resistor and the V out right there. So the sort of the goal of this video here is to sort of address the question of why does that happen? Why do the voltage divisions happen the way they do? And it works like this. Suppose I now took advantage of all these jumper wires I have going on here and measured the current going into the voltage divider. So I'm going to click that around to make a current measurement. I'm going to break into my circuit here as required by current measurements. Coming out of the battery on this white wire here is the current that would like to feed the circuit. See it coming right out of the battery, connected right to the red wire right there. That forces it through the meter. And then when I connect it like this, the current begins flowing through the circuit to the amount of about 0.72 milliamps. So the current that's being drawn by the circuit here, the two resistors, it's 0.72 milliamps. That's 0.72 thousandths of an amp. If I wanted to write it without the milli in there, it'd be 0 0.12372 amps, something like that. So it's a small amount of current, but a current nonetheless. So as we discussed in a previous video, because all of these are in so-called series connection, that's the current that's being drawn by the entire circuit. But since they're in series, that'll be the current that goes into R1. It'll be the same current that comes out of R1. That'll be the same current that goes into R2 and the same current that comes out of R2. If re you recall from a previous video, we placed a meter here, here, and here and got the same current every time. We won't repeat that. So hopefully you just sort of had that concept down now that the 0.72 milliamps is traveling through all the resistors. So with that idea in mind then, where do the voltage divisions come from? How does that work? Well, our position here that it's just a simple application of Ohm's law cast another way here. The first thing you can do is a couple of things here. If you want to predict that total current right here, that total current draw, well, we have about 
8.7 volts we're driving the circuit with. And you look at the two resistors, a 10K and a 2.2K, that's 12.2K total there. That's another application of Ohm's law. So if I do that quick division, the 8.7 divided by 12.2K, I do get indeed about 0 0.71 milliamps. Almost exactly matches the 0.72 that I measured right there. So you do get the right answer. That would be the total current draw. Now where do the voltage divisions come from? Well, it's another application of Ohm's law here, namely the form V is equal to IR. And here's the way it works. I have a resistor up here. In this case, R1. It's going to be a 10K resistor. And I know there's some current passing through it, 0.71 milliamps. So if I just multiply the current by the resistance, that'll give me the voltage drop that must be occurring across the resistor at that time. So if I take the 0.71, the 0 0.12371 amps, and I just multiply that by 10,000 ohms, which is the result, the amount of resistance there in R1, that gives me 7.1 volts, and that's almost exactly what I measured at 7.2. So that's where that comes from. And likewise, the voltage in the other resistor would come from the exact same analysis here, another application of Ohm's law right here, V equals IR. So V is equal to the current again. Again, the same current in that lower resistor, the R2, which is 2.2K. 2 1, 2, 3, 7, 1 amps again. And if I multiply that by the 2.2 2 or 2,200 ohm resistor there, I'm multiplying it out, my calculator here. I get that the voltage drop across that is about 1.56 volts. So see, it all is very consistent there. There's a 7.1 measured, 7.2, 1.56 calculated, 1.5 measured in there. So that's what we mean by sort of the secret life of a voltage divider here. It isn't really a secret how it works. It's just some application of Ohm's law in there. In particular, the voltage divider gets some current flowing in this case here, 0 0.71 milliamps. And whenever you have another interpretation of Ohm's law, which is this version down here, whenever you have some resistance, like an R1 or an R2, whenever you have some resistance and you have a current flowing through it, Ohm's law allows you to calculate how much voltage must be across that particular resistor. You have 7.1 volts when you have a 10,000 ohm resistor with 0 0.71 milliamps flowing through it. And it's 1.56 volts 1.56 volts when you have a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor with 0.72 milliamps throwing, flowing through it. So that's really what voltage dividers are about. They're about passing current through resistances and letting different voltage drop across voltage drops appear across the resistors and then maybe using the result for something like tapping into it. So as we saw before, or as we'll see in some videos coming up, if R2 becomes a variable resistor like a potentiometer, or a thermistor, or some of those things we mentioned in earlier videos. If you can make R2 vary, then the current will vary, and the voltage out will vary as well. Now, there's one caution about voltage dividers you have to be careful about. The 0.71 milliamps, or whatever the example was, was assumed to be always flowing just through this branch right here. That's where the current was assumed to be flowing. So if you start connecting the voltage divider to different devices, like it may be a light bulb or a microphone or whatever you're doing here, you have to make sure that when the current comes to this so-called junction right here, not too much of it's going to decide to split off and go this way, maybe to your, let's say, going out to your device. You want to make sure that this is going to be very small right here. Because if it's not small, if you start consuming too much current, that's going to mess up the 0.71 milliamps that are, say, required to flow through R2 to maintain the voltage divider working properly. So voltage dividers are good for doing these voltage division, but you have to be careful you don't draw too much of the voltage divider's current out in whatever application you happen to be using it with.